Hello! In this video, I'll show you how to create a simple CRUD application using Vaadem Framework. I want to create a contacts application. So here is a quick sketch showing how my application should look like. As you can see, on the left side, a grid holding my contacts, and then on the right side, a form displaying details about the selected contact from the grid. And then on the bottom area, some manipulation buttons such as save, cancel, and delete. So let's get started. I'll be using this simple backend service for serving my persons to the applications that I will create. As you can see on the GitHub project, there is explanation on how to uh, include it as a Maven dependency, as well as usage APIs and Java example code on how to inject it inside your project. So I'm going to use uh, this project, but to get started, I will create a new uh, Vaden project using Maven, typing Vaden, and then I will select the simple Vaden archetype, giving it a group ID, and let's call it contacts. Let's keep everything the default. And here I'm using IntelliJ, but uh, there is also a plugin available for Eclipse and NetBeans. Uh, nevertheless, you can basically use it with any IDE that you want. So once the project is created, you can see that there is this Java class that automatically got generated. It has some demo code showing you how uh, to get started. So it has a vertical layout, a text field, a button, a click listener with the button, and then adding this uh, layout. And there is also servlet annotations defined over here. Uh, before I show you how this application look like, I will include my backend dependencies inside my POM file. So inside the dependencies section. And then since I know that I'm going to use CDI and Java EE, I'm not uh, gonna rely on the servlet dependencies. Instead, I'm gonna replace them with Vaden CDI dependency. If you know the artifact ID, you can type it here right away or you can retrieve it from the Vaden add-on directory. Also, I will convert this UI to be a CDI UI and get rid of the servlet annotations. Now let's run this. I'm going to use Wildfly 10 to run this application. In practice, you can use any servlet container that you want. But as I said, uh, I want to use some Java EE specs and CDI. That's why I have to use uh, Wildfly or any application server that supports Java EE specs as well as CDI. And here is the result. So I can type something here. And then when I click on the button, you see the execution logic of the button click listener works as expected. But uh, this is not how the UI that I want to build. So let's go here back to my UI and let's start by defining a horizontal split panel. A horizontal split panel is a component container that can take two components and place them horizontally next to each other with a splitter in between. And then let's define a grid of type person. Person is the POJO retrieved from my uh, backend. And in the definition here, I'm going to give it the person class in the constructor uh, to tell grid to generate all the columns automatically for me. And then inside the init method, instead of this demo code, I will add the splitter. So make sure that the size is full for the splitter as well as for the grid. And then add the grid as the first component of the splitter. And then finally, make the splitter as the root of my UI. Since I don't want an empty grid, let's also populate some data inside the grid. To populate data, I can refer to the example code here. It shows how to inject the backend as well as how to retrieve data from the backend. So let's copy this code and just add it over here. So this is my backend service and then grid dot set items service dot get entries. Let's see how it works. Data is loaded nicely inside the grid. 
Things like resizing and sorting works out of the box. But this is for the left side. For the right side, it's a little bit more complex, as you can see. That's why I prefer to use Vaden Designer. So I will start by uh, creating a new Vaden Design. Let's call it Person Editor Design. And let's add a form layout. Inside this form layout, I will add a text field for first name, last name, and email, then a date field for the date of birth. Then I want to add a text area for the notes. And finally, the bottom area can be inside a horizontal layout in which I can add some buttons. So button for save, delete, and cancel. So uh, as you can see, we can get an immediate feedback about how the final UI would look like. And we can easily adjust it here before testing multiple time on browser. So I'm going to use those shortcut uh, tools to adjust my UI, expand the horizontal layout. You can see that buttons got distributed equally horizontally. And we can uh, push this button a little bit to left by changing the expand ratio to be one. And now we can give some captions to those fields. So first name, and also I'm going to give them a variable name to be able to reference to them later from the Java code. Um, if you are using the Eclipse plugin of uh, Designer, you're gonna have a button to automatically generate variable names for you. Uh, and this feature is coming soon to IntelliJ plugin as well. So date of birth, and also variable name. Here in the variable names, I'm trying to keep them similar to the member variable of my person because this is going to make it easy for me to automatically bind the fields to the person. But otherwise, you can uh, just simply make a manual binding. So now the form is ready. And we can see that there is a Java class that got generated automatically. It says here, do not edit this file. So I'm not supposed to modify this file. Quick look at this file. We see that it has the components defined uh, inside my form. And to be able to use this, the correct way is to basically create a new Java class, person editor view that extends my person editor design. And then inside my UI, I can basically define an instance of person editor view and set the size full as well. And finally, add it as the second component of my splitter. Let's see the results. Looks great. The form looks very nice. And the next step would be to populate the data inside this form once I select an item from the grid. To do that, I will start by adding a change listener to the grid so that whenever there is a selection happening, I pass this selection to the editor. So I will create a new uh, method. Let's call it set person, for example, that takes the selected bean from my grid. And here, I should be able to add the logic for populating the bean. To do that, I will start by defining a binder of type person. And this binder will be able to bind the member fields of my class to the person bean. I also need to initialize this binder. So I will do that inside the constructor. I will go with binder.bind instance fields of this, which is going to do the magic of automatically binding all member uh, fields inside this class with my POJO. And then binder.set being the given value. Let's see the results. So here, when I select an item from the grid, we can see that it got populated. For the final part, 
I want to add some logic for those manipulation buttons. I will start by uh, the save button. So here inside the constructor, I can add a click listener to my save button. And um, I need to have some kind of cross view communication between the person editor view and the UI to save the modified bean inside the backend. So to do that, I should normally do it through events like CDI events. This is a correct way of doing it. But here for simplicity, I'm gonna just define a consumer of type person and then um, make it accept the modified bean, which is binder.getBean, and then define the actual save mechanism over here inside the uh, constructor of the person editor view. So um, the logic goes as following. First of all, I need to save the modified bean inside the service. So service.save person, and let's keep it here as save person. And the next step is I actually also want to repopulate the grid. And the best way to do it is to do a line similar to this one. That's why maybe it's easier to just introduce this as a local method and call it one more time here. And finally, uh, it's a good idea to reselect the uh, modified bean, the new one uh, again inside the grid. So let's see how it looks like. Now I select a person, try to modify the first name, and then click save. And we see that the value got modified inside the grid as well. So this is for the save button. We can add similar logic to the cancel and delete buttons as well. I'm going to update this project, add some theming, and remove unneeded columns from the grid, for example, all those modifications as well as all the instructions that I have done throughout this video are going to be available on the GitHub link below.